Hi, hello, welcome to Spell Day. We're covering a spell every single day of the year from the 5e PHB plus 3. Those plus 3 spells are homebrew spells. And today's spell is Wall of Stone. 5th level evocation, casting time of 1 action, range of 120 feet, components for both material, a small block of granite, duration, concentration, up to 10 minutes. A non-magical wall of solid stone springs into existence at a point you choose within a range. The wall is 6 inches thick and is composed of 10 10 foot by 10 foot panels. Each panel must be contiguous with at least one other panel. Alternatively, you can create 10 foot by 20 foot panels that are only 3 inches thick. The wall cuts through a creature's space. When it appears, the creature is pushed to one side of the wall. Your choice. If a creature would be surrounded on all sides by the wall, or the wall and other solid surface, that creature can make a dexterity saving throw. On a success, it can use its reaction to move up to its speed so that it is no longer enclosed by the wall. The wall can have any shape you desire, though it can't occupy the same space as a creature or object. The wall doesn't need to be vertical or rest on any firm foundation. It must, however, merge with and be solidly supported by existing stone. Thus, you can use this spell to bridge a chasm or create a ramp. If you create a span greater than 20 feet in length, you must have the size of each panel to create supports. You can crudely shape the wall to create crenellations, battlements, and so on. The wall is an object made of stone that can be damaged and thus breached. Each panel has 15 AC and 30 hit points per inch of thickness. Reducing a panel to zero hit points destroys it and might cause connected panels to collapse at the DM's discretion. If you maintain your concentration on the spell for its whole duration, the wall becomes permanent and can't be dispelled. Otherwise, the wall disappears when the spell ends. Well, we have quite the world building section. Wall of Stone, or as I like to call it, the banishment of wall spells. <laughs> I, I, I don't call it that. Wall of Stone, or as I like to call it, the banishment of wall spells, because you lock it in for 10 minutes, that creature's not coming out but it's got some neat specifics related to all of the other wall spells. Namely, it has the actual physical barrier, like it is with Wall of Ice. However, it's not just the wall itself has only this amount of hit points and AC. Every inch of the wall has that amount of hit points or AC, which starts off at six inches. That's not that bad, that's 180 hit points, and each layer has AC 15. Once you break through and you go over the damage of that one, you still have to get through the next layer. In action as well, the fact that you can entirely trap a creature with this but actually offers a deck save, which I'm now realizing the past two spells didn't. Hmm. Yeah, I'm now realizing Wall of Fire, Wall of Ice, and Wall of uh, Force that we just covered, they don't, they don't allow, if you do try to perfectly, perfectly like encircle or in the other two cases with Wall of Force and Wall of Ice, do like a sphere and perfectly trap the creature or against another object in a, hem a hemisphere, it, there's no deck save to break out of it or try to dodge it or use a reaction to get out that's only for wall of stone and that's specifically because of the last clause in this because theoretically the other two the creature will break out whenever concentration ends because the barrier won't be there forever however not being able to make a save to break out of it and just being instantly trapped on one action is ridiculously good maybe not in wall of ice's case but wall of force especially ah that's definitely something for later when we go through the spells again but also an actual dodge mechanic, not just a single deck save, it's a deck save and then a reaction to move. Why is that not in more spells? <laughs> I get it so that the physical barrier is still there, and then they're not trapped, whereas with Fireball you can still technically be sitting in your space after the initial burst. But I wanted to add a little bit of, like, flavor or sense that if you passed a Fireball and took no damage, well I guess you still take half damage. So you're technically still in the blast. Anywho, having like boss or legendary action effects, they're they're about to bring down a hammer swing and then you have to use your reaction to dodge out of the way. It might make reactions more valuable in a boss fight to not just save for counterspell or shield or otherwise. Also, it's the most needing of support. Even with Wall of Ice, you just needed a base foundation to actually connect it to and then all those 10 foot panels or however weirdly you shaped it are fine. They can just sit there for the spell. Wall of Force can just be in midair. When it comes to this, you do actually need to make supports for it. If you go anything more than 20 foot up upon like a vert off a vertical surface, it needs to have make support. So it takes half of the material from it to make said support. It doesn't say, it just says half. It, so somehow, three inches of that stone, or thick of that stone, is being used to make a support over the deepest of chasms. Well, I guess you could do things like suspension or weird crenellations underneath it. Yeah, that's probably what it is. Not like a single pillar going down into a chasm. But the fact it has an automatic bridge that 
again, after 10 minutes stays permanent, which we'll, we'll touch on that, we'll touch on that. Though, one weird thing I have with this is the fact in two different sections. One says you can shape the wall into any shape you desire, and the other says you can crudely shape the wall to form some of these different effects. So which is it? Can you make it any shape you desire, or do you need to be very specific and like crude to form these doorways, crenellations, etc.? When it comes down to me, I say it's up to the DM and the table, just as it says here, it's up to the DM's discretion over how it breaks. And the reason it says that is that because not every wall is just going to be a base with the sense of this spell. It's not just going to be a base wall against the ground and you break one section of it, well the others are going to stay standing. If you made it go over a chasm or take weird vertical shapes, it's just saying like, hey DM, acknowledge that when it's just floating in the air and should fall, it's not Minecraft. Though in one case, it does need a solid foundation in stone. It says foundation in some place to actually anchor it. So I don't think just like a rock in the desert would work, like on top of a dune. I think that's going to fall over. It needs to be like in a mountain somewhere, or like a base rocky foundation that's been brought in. But the stone itself, which is evoc- it should be conjuration by the way, you're summoning stone, because it stays permanent. It's not like raw energy like a lot of evocation spells or just brief bits of force or elements. This is permanent. You are summoning this. This should be conjuration. There's a plane of earth, you're taking it from there. Anywho, that's just- me thing. That's that's just the settings. It doesn't say it needs to be on any firm foundation, but it does say it needs to be properly anchored into the stone, or the stone is properly anchored that it's coming from. Again, another which is it? And another left up to the table, really. Player-wise, making a physical barrier that has a lot- this is a lot more hit points. Yeah, they'll eventually break through it, but you can make it permanent, especially if the creature doesn't have really the means to damage it quickly. Trapping it in a chasm, into a cave, locking it off. I mean, really, you could seal off any cave. But for Adventurer, it's a cage, really. Or a physical wall, or a barrier, or again, you can make crenellations, or shape it however you want, depending. But Adventurer making a bridge over a chasm, blocking off a previous door, anywhere we have stone as an anchor, yeah, you can manipulate the battlefield. So world building wise, and players can do this as well, but build everything. <laughs> build everything. It's only a 5th level spell slot- uh, now that- no, no no I know that sounds a bit crazy for me just saying it's only a 5th level spell slot. That's pretty decently high for any NPC that's not just a plain player character or BBEG. But, it only takes a small block of granite. There's no gold cost. <laughs> it's an action, 120 foot range, it's permanent after 10 minutes. Automatically adds in its own supports. You can shape it alongside the initial casting of it, and then you can carve it after. And it's a wall that has hit points and AC properly. 30 per inch. Every castle. Not just every castle, every building. It's super cheap. Construction itself already takes a good amount of time. Already takes resources, already takes money, already takes gold, already takes cost. To be able to go out to a quarry, mine it, pull it onto carts, transport it over to the construction site, build it, stack it, use any kind of mixture of concrete to actually hold it all together and the initial supports and architects. All of that takes time and gold and many people working on it. One person can get months of work done, thousands of gold worth, for only a spell slot. Okay, maybe not months, because 10, 10 by 10, but you get what I mean. The fact that so much time and work and effort and gold and actual manual labor and resources can be just brought down. You, you could build- you don't have to worry about quarries. You don't have to worry about getting your stone from somewhere. Because you can just make it. You can just form it. And already prefabricated- not literally prefabricated, uh, prefabricated, but built. In my settings, there's been a number of mageocracies, and a lot of different structures have been built this way. Over just- yeah, why not? <laughs> An entire mageocracy that, yeah, they didn't have people that they just paid to go out and get stones and quarry because they were just few enough in number and built all their temples out of this. And other spells as well to shape it or add on to it. You, supports are built into this spell. One fifth level, hold ten minutes, this is permanent. Not even dispelled. It's not until dispelled. It's a permanent structure now. That stone now exists. That is breaking material laws and that you have just made matter. Now I know it's magic and doesn't even bother to listen to any of that in the first place, but you... It's significant, but just with all these other spells we've already talked about, mostly transmutation, but various things that like can affect arcane architecture and building with magic, this is a big one. This is a big one. 120 foot range. You don't need a crane. You can do up to 120 feet away, set up this wall. Or not necessarily a wall, it's set up these 
plates of stone, build a ramp, a staircase, the crenellations, the various rooms in between. It automatically forms supports by just taking half the material. Think of all the weird, weird forms of architecture that you can do by just having a panel within the same six seconds automatically form its own supports attached to its, previously anchor, uh, its previous anchor point. And you don't have to rely on local materials. There's one set of ruins made during the golden age of mageocracy where it is almost this weirdly prefabricated place because they didn't build it with everyone in mind initially. They just made separate buildings. Like, okay, here's a simple door, here's a simple spot for a window, separate rooms, done. Over just a few days, or even in just one day, depending on its size, with a bunch of spellcasters just casting Wall of Stone. In just a minute, an entire building's done. Or more, depending on how size, or less, depending on size. Again, the bridges, chasms. Do you know how hard it is, especially in medieval times, to build a bridge? A stone bridge over a thousand foot fantasy chasm? All the weird fantastical bits of architecture that are namely made of stone can be done with this. They might be blocky, but that just adds to its weird nature. Or they might not be blocky, depending on how you read the details you can make of this. Again, any shape and then rough shape. Those are both descriptions in the same spell. <laughs> Leave that up to you. And again, you know, a little bit of homebrew reflavoring. Especially when something's left that, that vague, even though it says rough, how rough? Wording that allows you to move around it. A bit of wiggle room. Not to mention the number of just tombs and caves that are just sealed off with one casting of this, and looks like a completely smooth surface in a cave, and you're like, oh, that's not natural. Someone blocked that off a long time ago. Maybe there's myths and legends and weird portents of, if you ever see a perfectly smooth surface in a cave entrance, or within some kind of tunnel, don't go there. It was blocked off and warded for a reason. And if you have a group of mages that are able to cast this, again, we've talked about buildings, but yeah, castles and fortifications, or bridges in days, or, or not even days, minutes. Military formations trying to get across a river, done. Yes, there's other transmutation spells and other stuff, but that doesn't exclude this. This just complements it. And likewise for them, it can get really weird with the architecture. Have fun. Nine out of 10. Because both in the player's hands, being able to possibly just trap something in stone, and again, a physical barrier you can actually keep, which you can make crenellations in, in, again, an action, and last 10 minutes, if you have a group, of, and you can make a roof on top of yourself as well. You can make a bunker for just you, or you can try and trap an enemy in a bunker. The downside is you need to be around stone to begin with, so in a desert or on the ocean, it's not going to be too useful. But, I don't know, rocky plains? Mountainside? Dwarves as well especially would be using this, NPC-wise or adventurer-wise. And then, all again, all the weird arcane architecture, the rapid building, the rapid just a bridge already just manifested in a few minutes, or an entire castle or fortification with a group of widges, uh, wizards, or rather mages. 9 out of 10. It's good. It's a favorite.